Hey guys, it's Charlene. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you five different things you can put behind die cut windows that's not a shaker card. I'm going to be using the A Little Note Stamps, Dies, and Stencils from Honeybee Stamps to make all five of these cards. I'm starting out here with some black pigment ink. This is my favorite black pigment ink. This is the Versafine Claire in Nocturne. I just think it stamps really well and gives you a nice crisp image. So I'm stamping this out onto an A2 size card panel that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm just making sure to press down really well so I can get all of the details on this image. I stamped two more off camera and now I'm coming in with a piece of craft cardstock and I'm using some white pigment ink from Hero Arts. This is Unicorn. And I'm going to stamp this down on the craft cardstock. Now pigment ink sits on top of the paper so it does stay wet a little bit longer, especially white pigment ink. So what I like to do is make sure that my ink is really dry before I move on to a next step. With the white pigment ink, I also like to make sure and stamp twice because I find that gives me a much brighter, crisper image because I'm getting more of that white pigment onto the paper. Remember, pigment ink sits on top of the paper and it dries there, unlike dye ink, which is going to go down into the fibers of the paper. Now I've got my heat tool here so I can make sure those are really nice and dry before I move on to the next step which is gonna be the stenciling. Now this is a layering stencil set, which is really fun because it means I can color lots of different areas of these images and do it very quickly. For the first layer, I'm using picked raspberry and that's gonna fill in all of the main flower colors. Now for the second layer here, I'm coming in with sponge sugar and the sponge sugar on this second stencil will go over the main inset heart as well as the insides of the flowers. Next is Kitsch Flamingo, and I'm actually using this to color in the larger leaves. And lastly, I'm coming in with the new Distress Oxide color, Lost Shadow, and this is gonna cover the very center of the flowers, as well as the longer, skinnier leaves. So this is a fun look. It's all pinks and grays, and once I'm all done, I'm putting it right back in my Misty. I never remove the stamp, and I'm gonna do one more layer of the white Unicorn Pigment ink. This is really gonna make it so that everything pops. It's gonna add that definition back in that we lost a little bit from going over everything with those Distress Oxides. My second card has a completely different color scheme. I'm using Saltwater Taffy for the main flowers, and then I have Lumberjack Plaid for the small hearts and the inset heart. And I'm gonna use Mowed Lawn for the larger leaves. I did leave the skinnier leaves completely blank this time around and I've used some lost shadow just to do the centers of the flowers. Again back with the white pigment ink so we can get a lot of that fun detail back on there because we did use distress oxides. So distress oxides are a hybrid ink which means that they're part pigment part dye and so they layer really well but you also lose the definition from your initial ink underneath. I'm switching over to some Distress Ink colors for this next card. I'm using Tattered Rose, Barn Door, Aged Mahogany, Rustic Wilderness, and Shabby Shutters. So this is a fun color combination. It kind of has a neat vintage vibe. I really like how it turned out. And you can see when I'm gonna be doing multiple different colors using the same stencil, using that fine detail brush is really helpful. So there's that one. This next one, I'm coming in with Picked Raspberry, Villainous Potion, Peacock Feathers, Lucky Clover, and Twisted Citron. So this is gonna have a really bright, fun vibe. It's kind of an 80s vibe, I think. I really like how it turned out. I don't use my Twisted Citron nearly often enough. I think it's a really fun, bright yellow green and it needs to get used more. So I've got some white gel pen here. I'm coming in and I'm doing the details on the flowers with this one just those centers there, just so they can really pop off the page. For the fifth card, I'm using Copic Colors. So I've got R20, R22, R37, BV31, and E18. BV31 is a really pale blue violet, and I'm using it on the larger leaves. 
And then the E18 is a nice reddish brown color and I'm using it on the skinnier leaves. I really like how this turned out. I think it's a fun and whimsical color combination. You guys will have to let me know what you think down in the comments. The coordinating dies have tons of different options, which is really fun. I've used them to cut out the outer part and the inset part of that heart wreath. So there's our five wreaths. Now let's dive into the five different things you can put behind these die cuts. The first one I'm using here is some paper glitz. So you can use any kind of mixed media product that you have. It could be texture paste. It could be glitz like this. It could be any kind of glitter gel and you just want to go ahead and make sure you're getting enough down on a piece of cardstock that when you put your piece over it, it's not going to show any of the white paper. The other thing is, is you definitely want to make sure and let it dry completely. The second fun thing you can put behind a die cut is ribbon and it can be big, solid, thick ribbon like this. I love this ribbon. It's a nice burlap with some like gold sparkles in it or you can use thinner ribbon and do multiple pieces across the back of your die cut. You're just gonna to wanna to put down some really sticky double-sided tape, or you can use some tacky glue. I don't recommend using a very liquidy glue. You wanna use something that's got a lot of stick to it and then let it dry completely. This double-sided tape sticks like no other, so that's why I'm using this one. And you're just gonna get your piece of ribbon down on there and then trim off any excess that might be peeking around the edges because you don't wanna see this from the front. Oh, I just love, I love this one. I think that's my favorite card. Okay, the third thing that you can put behind there is vellum. So a lot of times people put acetate because they're gonna make a shaker card, but you can also put vellum and the vellum just kind of gives you this ethereal kind of feeling to your card. And I thought this was really fun with the bright colors because then you're gonna have this really nice white kind of shaded vellum behind it. Once you get your vellum down on there, again, you can use double-sided tape or glue. I prefer double-sided tape. You just trim off any excess. The third thing you can use is patterned paper. I love this. You can use any kind of pattern paper you want. If you're using a floral stamp like I've used here, I would say it's probably going to work better for you if you use some kind of easy geometric pattern like stripes or dots or something like that in the center. But again, you're just going to glue that to the back of your die cut. You also could pop up your die cut so that you see the pattern paper kind of sitting back underneath. And so I'm doing a variety here. Some of them I'm sticking directly to the back of the die cut. And then some of them you're gonna see like with the paper glitz, the sparkly pink glitz, I'm going to pop up the die cut with foam tape so you get some added dimension there. The next one is washi tape. So I don't own a lot of washi tape. I'm actually changing that and I'm gonna be getting some soon in the mail, so I'm excited about that. But I have this really pretty glitter washi tape and I've been wanting to use it. I'm just making sure to get it so that it's right underneath my die cut. And the nice thing about the washi tape is if you put it in the wrong place or you need to adjust it, you need to trim it, anything like that, it comes right back off your paper. I think this card would look really neat with lots of different kinds of washi tape. Like you could do different strips and different colors. So let your imagination go wild when you're using washi tape on your cards. Now I've got a piece of white cardstock and I'm just swiping my little distress ink pad on there directly. I'm using tattered rose and I'm making sure that I've got enough coverage on there that the banner stamp is gonna be able to stamp on top there. You can see it's completely dried now. Isn't it crazy what a different color it dries to? It's such a pretty color. I'm stamping this in black pigment ink right on top. And then I'm also going to come in with the sentiment stamp and put that right in the middle of the banner stamp. I really like the coordinating dies and the stamps because they give you a lot of different options for your sentiments. So the stamp set has the banner stamp and then it also has all of the little sentiments that fit right inside it. And then the die set you're gonna see here in a few minutes has a banner die that you can actually cut out. So it's pretty cool. 
I've taken a piece of white cardstock and I went around it with shabby shutters, which is the same color I used for those thinner leaves on the floral wreath on this card. And I cut it down so that it's about an eighth of an inch smaller than an A2 size card. I also cut out a piece of white cardstock and I cut that down so that it's about an eighth of an inch smaller than the shabby shutter border piece is gonna be. So we're gonna get this nice slim shabby shutter colored border all the way around our card panel, which is then gonna go on top of our white A2 size card. So you get this really pretty border and it coordinates with your floral wreath. I love this technique. I definitely recommend trying this in order to kind of make your card look a little more cohesive. You can use different colors in different areas of the card in order to tie everything all together. So for the banner, you've got the tattered rose, which is the same color as the large flowers on the card. And then you've got that shabby shutters border, which is the same color as the thin leaves. So I think that works out really well. I chose to use foam tape to pop up the banner and the floral heart wreath, but you could certainly use liquid glue and put this directly onto your card front. I wanted to add some of these small detail stamps that are on here, and I wanted them to line up with the stencils so that it would be really easy to color. So I actually found the spots using the transparency that has the printing on it from the stamp cover, and I put the tiny stamps so that they lined up with those. And then I closed my misty door on there. So now when I stamp out the little flowers and the heart and the leaves and everything, I can go back in with the coloring stencils and they're going to line up exactly where they need to be. So I can easily color the images with my inks without having to worry about messing anything up or twist the stencils all over the place. So you can see here I'm doing the flowers and the centers and the leaves and everything in the same color scheme that I used for the card. And then I used the coordinating die cuts to cut everything out. And I added these fun little details to the inside of the card. This is a great way to tie the inside of your card in with the outside is by adding some of the small die cuts along the base of your card on the inside and creating just a nice little essentially border strip along the inside bottom part of your card. To add some fun details, I decided to go in with some glossy accents and I'm filling in the tiny hearts on the front of the card as well as the centers of several of the flowers. I don't go in on all of the flowers because I'm actually also going to add in some little teeny tiny gold baubles because I wanted something gold to pick up the gold thread in that ribbon that we have backing the heart. So, so pretty. Love this card. Like I said, I think this one's probably my favorite. For the second card, I'm using the dies and I've cut out the banner. That's what I was talking about earlier. And I'm using some white pigment ink here in order to stamp my sentiment. And you could also heat emboss this with white embossing powder. I decided to stamp it with just the pigment ink to give it this whole card's gonna have kind of a nice soft look. The banner die cuts, there's three of them. So one is your top layer and then the second layer is that little inset piece, which if you color the kind of bottom edges, that's gonna be the shadow area of your banner. And then the third piece has the little, I don't know, the little squiggly parts that come out from each side. I'm not sure what or how to describe it. I like that it's three layers though, because you could also, if you're doing it in colored cardstock, you could use a slightly darker shade of cardstock for the middle piece in order to accomplish the shading. And it really makes it look 3D. You could pop each of these up with a small thin layer of foam tape. I went ahead and glued them all together though, and I'm just popping the whole thing up with some foam tape. So it really just depends on how much dimension you want to add to your card. So now I've got my floral wreath also popped up on some foam tape and I'm gonna put it over the washi tape. And so it adds that kind of set back look to the washi tape. I also do this with the glitz later in the video and then finishing touch just adding some different shades of pretty pink sequins 
in order to pick up the pinks from the floral heart wreath. So really pretty. Okay, next card, back to the Copic coloring. I again stamped out those extra floral leaf and heart images. I also stamped out my sentiment. This one is the just a little note sentiment. And then I'm coloring in those little pieces with the same Copic marker colors that I used earlier. I decided to do kind of a fun spin on Dimension, at least I think it's fun. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you guys will too. And I decided that my floral wreath is actually going to be the lowest part on my card versus the little tiny pieces that are going to be around it. And that'll make more sense here in just a moment. But I cut out two die cuts of the floral heart wreath and I glued them behind the one that we colored and had our pattern piece of paper. And then I cut out the just a little note. So it does have with the coordinating dies, you can also cut out the sentiments like this rather than stamping them onto the banner. And so I love all those different options. I did two layers, extra layers for that sentiment as well. So I'm going to put my floral wreath down on there using some liquid adhesive on an A2 size card, card base there. And then I'm going to glue my sentiment right across the heart. So it kind of looks like a little garland. So this is what I was talking about with the reverse dimension. You can see I'm using tiny foam adhesive squares to pop up the flowers as well as the heart on each side of the wreath. To add a little bling, I have some stickles and I'm just applying that to the centers of the flowers as well as the little heart so we get a little bit of glitter when you turn the card in the light. Such a cool card. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment directly to my card base, and I'm using this really pretty teal color card base. And so I'm stamping this in white pigment ink. Now, if you watched my last video, I mentioned that I don't usually heat emboss with white pigment ink because I find sometimes I have trouble with it. In particular, if it's a really wet pigment ink, I'd rather use my Versamark embossing ink. The Hero Arts Unicorn Pigment Ink is, it's really nice white pigment ink. I think it's probably my favorite of the ones that I've tried. So it tends to work pretty well with heat embossing. I don't know that it works better for me than the Versamark embossing ink, but here I already had it out on my desk, so I grabbed it. And you can see I'm heating that up now with my heat tool. I will note for you guys that if you are going to heat emboss in white on colored cardstock, Oftentimes colored cardstock is not as smooth as white cardstock is. So just make sure you get a really nice coating of anti-static powder tool down on there. So I've stamped out some of the little hearts and I'm coloring them in with the same exact colors that I used on the floral heart wreath. I'm doing two in each color. I've got a couple extras there. I don't end up using them, but I'm gonna put a few on the front of the card on each side of the wreath. And the remaining ones, I'm gonna do a border strip along the inside bottom of the card, just like we did with the other card where I used the tiny die cuts. And for this one, I wanted it to have a fair bit of dimension. So I popped up the floral heart wreath with foam tape, and then I also am popping up the center panel. I misspoke earlier. I said I was using the turquoise colored cardstock as my card base. It's actually just, the main background piece, and then I used a white A2 card for this card. I This one's so fun. It's an unexpected, I'm doing lots of unexpected color combinations today, so I hope you guys appreciate that. I've got a piece of white cardstock here. I put some of the Lumberjack Plaid Distress Oxide down on it. I did let this dry for a little bit before I did this heat embossing. And because I'm doing the heat embossing on the ink, I am going to do this in Versamark embossing ink, and I am going to make sure and get a really nice coating, and I also put a good amount of that anti-static powder tool down. So I'm heat embossing this in white, and then I'm gonna repeat the whole process once this is done. I put it back in the misty, I put some more anti-static powder tool down, and I stamped the sentiment in the center of the banner, and then I go back in and I heat emboss that as well in the white embossing powder. This is yet another fun way to use this set. You can use dye to stamp the sentiment and the banner dye, 
or you could heat emboss it and then cut it out. It just gives a completely different look. For my border on this card, I'm going to use the same technique I used earlier where I put shabby shutters around the edges of a card. This time I did it with lumberjack plaid. Now I've got my beautiful floral wreath there and this time I'm taking the die cut banner here and I'm putting it directly across the heart. So you could put the banner or the sentiments across the heart, inside the heart, under the heart. There's so many different options here and everything's going to look really nice on a layout. I'm using some double-sided tape to secure that on top of there and then I'm going to use some foam tape to secure that whole thing over the top of our glitz that we did. So this is completely dry now and I'm going to use some tape underneath this. I didn't want it to have any kind of little bumps or anything like that underneath it so I'm using double-sided tape just to be safe. I probably could have used liquid adhesive but I didn't want to risk it. But I did trim off all the extra bits of cardstock because I don't want anything to show out from underneath the sides of my floral wreath. Something to mention here, you'll notice that the lumberjack plaid on the banner die cut that I did as well as the edge where I went around the piece of cardstock, it doesn't perfectly match the lumberjack plaid color that is on the hearts because I did that on craft cardstock. So the Distress Oxide will take on some of the color of the colored cardstock that you use. So keep that in mind, it's gonna look a little darker on the craft cardstock than on white. So if you wanted it to have the exact same color, then you would wanna use craft cardstock for your border piece and craft cardstock for the piece where you stamp the banner as well as the sentiment. I actually like how it looks because I feel like it adds another shade of that same red color and I added some clear gems on there to finish that up and you've got a fun blingy sparkly card. To recap, we have ribbon under that first card, washi tape under the second one, We've got some patterned paper under the third floral wreath. We have vellum under the fourth. And then fifth, we have that beautiful mixed media with the paper glitz. All right, guys, that wraps up my video. I hope you picked up some good tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.